Hello, and welcome to the Pragmatic Live podcast series, where we tackle the biggest challenges facing today's product management, product marketing, and other market and data-driven professionals with some of the best minds in the industry. I'm Rebecca Caligeris, Vice President of Marketing at Pragmatic Institute, and your host for this episode. Today, we're joined by Jeremy Horn, who is VP and Global Head of Product Management at Cognizant, but perhaps better known as the product guy consultant, speaker, and all-around advocate of the product management profession. Welcome, Jeremy. How are you doing? Great. I'm thrilled to have you on. Uh, I'm sorry it took so long for our past to cross, but I think, uh, you know, when we were talking about, about kind of what angle to go on, you, there's so much we could explore in product management. There's so much that you know and you think about and, and the topics that overlap. But I think what's really interesting is kind of your story of your start at Cognizant and how that is applicable to how much all of us have had to change with COVID because you were telling me that you started at Cognizant the day they shut down New York. Yes. Yes, I did. Um, I, uh, um, I, I got the, I, I, I very fortunately got the opportunity to uh, uh, kind of meet uh, a great group of people uh, in the lead up uh, to March about a lot of great opportunities, a lot of great things that Cognizant was doing. And then yes, my, my start date, uh, at Cognizant was the day they closed schools in New York City. Um, and uh, so I, I basically, when I started out, I, the, the, when I started out, the, 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 the language of the time was about a, a pandemic and coronavirus. And what I, I saw and what I just, what I kind of started seeing a lot of interesting parallels was talking about how um, how uh, companies and people and and just uh, everyone had to adapt and adjust to this to to this new reality and a lot of that language uh, lined up with what we as product managers uh, what we as as good product managers are kind of doing and managing all the time. When I think it's so interesting as someone uh, that you've you've consulted about starting product teams and being a product leader, you've written about it, you've you've certainly talked about it and thought about it. And I bet a lot of what you had thought about building a team and kind of starting just shifted in that environment. It's interesting. So when I, when I thought about, um, yes, the, I think at, at, a, at one level, the mechanics uh, definitely changed. Like you're not doing, when you're talking about building a team or, or shaping a team or kind of, uh, or, or, or just restructuring or whatever you're doing, um, the, 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 at one level, yeah, everything became virtual. All of a sudden, uh, this is the closest I've gotten to uh, uh, talking to anyone on my team. Uh, but when I think at, the, at, at a fundamental level, though, um, when you think about uh, what, is a, what do we do with, with our teams, what do we do with, um, how do we do product management, uh, those things haven't changed. And I think in some ways, some, in some ways, a few things got a little bit easier. Um, but I also think some of the, the challenges that have come up have kind of I've always found that uh, when you when you when you face challenges, that overcoming those challenges ends up making making you and 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 your organization around it better. But just the team in general, the when I I joined Cognizant, I I, I knew we were working on um, uh, real uh, doing a lot of work around product management and uh, global strategy. Um, but I can tell you, one of the things I, I was most excited about. Uh, was when I finally got to meet everyone on the team and see all, all the different people. We have, a, we have a great and amazing group of product managers, and I've been uh, constantly impressed by, by how awesome they are at doing product management. And that's the thing. Like when, when you, when, if you're good at product management and you know um, and, and you've got the fundamentals, what are those fundamentals and how do they line up with the, the current environment? And a lot of product management, it's about what are my risks? What are the, right pro what are the problems? How do I mitigate those risks? How do I make sure I'm using the right resources um, at the right time? Um, and how do I make sure I'm, I'm making good incremental progress towards those larger goals? And I can see it, I can feel it. Um, and if I'm making a wrong path, I can make, a, hopefully it's a small step I made and I can make rapid adjustments. And so it's that kind of, that, that way of thinking that when you do have such a great team of product managers, it really speaks to our time. It really speaks to what everyone uh, uh, either needs or is doing or is trying to do out there, which is be more nimble, um, uh, make sure they're working towards business, not working on, on a feature, not working for a certain number of points or, or, or 
just uh, finishing a, a, a random deliverable. Make sure that you're, you're showing and you're making material progress towards very important key business objectives uh, that, will, uh, uh, that will actually have an impact on the business. Making sure that wherever your customers are now, that you find them, you get in touch with them, you reach them, and you, and you build on that. Um, but you're only going to do that if you've got the right kind of product talent in place that has that is focused on the problems, that's focused on the outcomes, um, that's really about folk making sure that whatever that next biggest risk is, tackling it head on, uh, mitigating it, f testing it, experimenting, validating, invalidating, and then making sure that that next step is uh, right around the corner as well. Excellent point. You're right. The fundamentals of what matter don't change at all. Some of the mechanics of how we do them. And I think in some places, maybe even the speed, right? We talk about being fast paced in technology all the time. I do think that maybe COVID like bumped into us and flipped up the dial even <laughs> faster um, in terms of change and as markets and, and the things we need to keep an eye on change. But you're right. The fundamentals of what matter doesn't change. And some things got a little bit easier. Uh, we do customer development, right? Customer development is an important part of product management. Customer development, under uh, evaluating product market fit, validating various hypotheses along the way. Um, guess what? Everyone's available at their, at, at their computer now. Um, and so if you want to talk to someone, if you want to reach out, if you're kind of uh, surveying people or testing certain ideas, that, that I think just even that alone, um, man, it's so much easier to, to get a pool of people together to validate validate ideas, have hypotheses, and what would have taken a very long time to coordinate and figure out in the past, like you, you gotta go meet everyone at a coffee house, ask a lot of questions, coll collate a lot of information. Now I can do it from my computer. Um, and when you have a team that's also global, um, you can really attack it from a lot of different time zones, a lot of different angles, and you can rapidly get that information and rapidly get that data. Um, that did take a good bit of time before. So as far as like customer development and certain types of experiments, I, f I found that we can move a lot faster, um, which has been one of the positive side effects of everything. That's interesting. We hear from all of our uh, win-loss partners, right? That the uh, acceptance rate of win-loss interviews is, is more than tripled during COVID. Because again, there's a, a level of accessibility and, a, and a, a certain amount of, yeah, I would take an interesting conversation. I, I don't have as many uh, you know, water cooler conversations. Um, in terms of experiments, that's super interesting, right? So there's the kind of research and data. Can you talk a little bit about some of the experience and maybe some of the innovation that's been able to, to like pop up in that approach? Yeah, so I, I always go of the very broad definition of, of experimentation, right? So for me, experiments are everything from, from talking to the customer to if you're doing an A-B test or I'm just yanking out a button and seeing if anyone noticed um, <laughs> to to uh, again, putting another button in that doesn't do anything, see if anyone clicks it. Um, and so there's a lot of those types of experiments, but I think what, what people have been able to get creative about, because again, what do we have to do? We're mitigating risk and we, we only have so many resources. We only have so much time and everyone's time is even more precious now as they're trying to juggle work and, and home life and everything else. And so as product managers, a lot of it is about figuring out how can I make the best use of my resources and by res and best res use of my team, whether it's UX, designers, full stack, engin full stack engineers, um, everyone, everyone that's an important part of that, that team, or as we call them pods um, out there. And so a lot of that is, I, I'd rather not to have to do something uh, uh, for, send something over to engineering to do an experiment. Those are my expensive experiments. What, mm -hmm. I, what we try to do is we try to uh, uh, for, we try to see what we can kind of validate and test through conversation with people. We see what we can do. Uh, sometimes it's, a, it's like a, a mock-up of a wireframe or, or a storyboard um, or, or, or kind of getting together a, a, a group of people, uh, getting together different people to kind of tell a narrative, see what sticks, what doesn't, what, 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 uh, what triggers, what doesn't. But every one of these experiments, when you design them, um, you, you have, that, they think it, the most important part is you're making sure that you're validating one single thing. You're not, we're not trying to do multivariate analysis when we're doing each of these experiments. I'm trying to validate or invalidate a single hypothesis every step of the way. And the whole idea is to have lots of these experiments constantly getting generated mm -hmm. and lined up so that we're making more and more informed decisions and we're catching mistakes uh, more frequently. I usually assume 3% uh, of my ideas will, will work. So that's why I wanna make sure I got a lot of experiments lined up and I'm testing and I'm thinking and I'm collecting feedback 
every incremental step uh, along the way. So one of the things that I think uh, we all have dealt with in, in product is, is we spend a lot of time uh, working with, motivating, influencing peers and other in our adjacent groups, right? Can we talk a little bit about how that has changed both and how do you build strong relationships really fast when you're not in the building with them? Uh, and then even when there are longer you know, members of your team that have more sort of relationship equity, how do you continue that influence piece uh, in such a dispersed environment. That's interesting. Um, I'm going to go back to a startup I did several years ago. Um, this is uh, 2006. So back in 2006, I did, uh, I, I founded a startup called Single Feet. And it was a small startup. We were pretty successful in the end. Um, but one of the, the interesting things, we got, we had limited budget, limited resources. And one of the things that ended up happening was um, instead of hiring everyone here in New York City, and by the way, the two, co uh, myself and the co-founder, um, he was out in California. So we were already very distributed as, as it was. And then we started hiring people. I thought we would be in New York City. Uh, ends up being everywhere. Um, I think it was a startup. We were in five different countries out of the gate. No, there was no two people in the same uh, state or country or time zone or, or anything. Um, and I remember thinking, man, this isn't going to work. Um, this, this, this is not gonna, this is not gonna produce results, but you know what? I'm game. It kept, it's keeping the cost down. Let's give it a try. Um, and what I found, um, in, in that process and the reason I, I, I point to that first, cause you know, we're going back several years and the technology was a bit different back in uh, 2006. Um, we were able to, we were all met virtually. We never, we, I, I don't know if I met anyone on the team in person except my co-founder, um, uh, over the course of several years of working on that. Um, but what we did is we created the water cooler. The water cooler was the chat room. It was, but that, that would be, that's your Slack. That's your teams today. Um, we had uh, 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 the times where someone might walk into your office and, and have a chat with you. Um, those are kind of, those were IM messages. That's, 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 uh, that's kind of your direct chat conversations, whether you're using a Google Meet or whatever, uh, or, or, or the chat feature in Teams or the other, those direct messages. Um, and so what we found, um, what I found then, um, I found still kind of holds true today. And so that's just with, even within the team is that within the team, like you have the water cooler, everyone's talking, chatting, and you know you're doing well when people are just cracking a random joke or saying something silly or not always on topic. Um, when, when people feel comfortable just reaching out to you whenever there is something to talk about. And so, that's just the dynamic within the team. But what's interesting about what we're doing now is we're just saying that and now we're saying, now can we scale it? And what I found um, in working, working with clients um, and working with uh, um, other, other units across the organization, and Cognizant is a 300,000 person company um, in, in all around the world. And I have found that I have built some of the, the best relationships um, at Cognizant, or maybe even better than almost anywhere else I have. Beyond people being expert in what they're doing, um, they're also, I'd say this is probably one of the friendliest uh, uh, companies I, I've ever worked with. And so all it, all it kind of did was the, the, the mode changed, like it's all virtual. Um, and I sit down a lot, so sometimes my sometimes my, my lower half gets a little numb. Uh, but other than that, um, I'm still I'm still talking to people. We're joking all the time, um, and uh, you kind of you kind of learn when to be a little bit more formal, a little bit more informal. But those conversations, and I found that those relationships are still getting formed. I find I still do the the pull aside chats, or I'll pull pull together a group of people into a, another side chat that I just want to talk about something. Or, and also you just kind of, you reach out, you kind of, you, you keep it real with people. You kind of just say like, how, make sure people's days are going well, or you talk about the weather um, or just whatever else kind of comes up. So you, you help people kind of stay a little bit more fluid in the situation. Um, but I found that it has scaled very well. Um, just like, just like back in when I did single feed, when I did single feed, I didn't think it would work then. My, and I was proven very wrong when the whole team, it just coalesced and it worked great and the execution was great and it was also awesome that we were covering we were able to kind of have a very continuous work cycle back then and now at cognizant it's like we're because of our global distribution not only are we kind of uh, de-risked because we have people everywhere and we have experts everywhere 
Uh, but because of the, just the global coverage, we're able to keep executing and keep moving um, in a way that, that uh, I, I couldn't think of ever doing somewhere else. And the, really, and the, the layer of the relationships on top of that, or it's, it's just, it just worked. Like, it's just, it's the same kind of thing that I did, that I did years ago, but now it's just at scale and it's become such a natural part. And I, I'm sure you know this too, it becomes just such a natural part of, of interacting with people. If I'm gonna to talk to someone where I might've talked, spoken to them on the phone before, um, it's actually more natural for me now to talk to someone with video. And so it's weird if I'm talking to someone I can't see them. Um, so it's, uh, I think that kind of, uh, that, that visual connection, the, the, the talking, the feeling free to just reach out to people more and more, um, I think has been a very, uh, it's just been a, it's been a very positive thing. I, I don't know if it made the relationships, I don't know if it's cognizant that made the relationships easy or cognizant mixed with, uh, the fact that now we, you get to talk to everyone much more, uh, fluidly throughout the day, um, uh, than you might've been able to before. Uh, that made it even better. So I don't know the distinction yet. I still, I still need more time to, to figure that one out. I do think, to your point, remote work in general has grown so much. The tools have grown so much. And I also think in the pandemic, uh, there is an intimacy in the remote work that wasn't always there. But you know, before, if you worked remotely, you kind of tried to hide it, right? Yes. Like the whole thing was to pretend like you were not working remotely. And now, like everyone, like I can see, I can see your kids' drawings behind you and you're in, in the picture. But, but there's an intimacy to that, that that allows and encourages those kind of relationships, I think, in a way that when we were trying to hide what we were doing, wasn't possible. Yeah. Yeah. My, my son has insisted on decorating uh, the wall behind me so everyone can see his artwork. I um, love that. Uh, he's five. And so this is, this, we've got some good stuff here. It's um, very quality stuff. We've got a future Van Gogh. Just, you guys can't see it. You're going to have to take my word for it, but it is great. <laughs> and it makes you smile. And that's, that's always good. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I've, I've, uh, I, I've had kids sitting on my laps in important meetings. Um, I've had them run in uh, at other times when I was talking to a, a, a client or something, but everyone kind of rolls with it. Um, and I, I, do, I find, I think that has also kind of helped create more connection between people when people just like, showing the human side of ourselves mm -hmm. a little bit more, um, uh, helping people kind of uh, realize, oh wait, you have that problem too, or you have that challenge, I'll say it more positively. Yes. Um, you have that challenge. Um, and so everyone gets it, everyone, everyone's kind of in the, the same soup or same, a version of it. Um, and uh, we're all, we all kind of know to make, make the best of, of what we got, but it's good to kind of kind of see the other side or kind of see what's, what's going on there. So it's, it, it's, it's, uh, I enjoy it when they come running in. Um, it gets a little bit hairy when, when they come running in and want to talk. Um, <laughs> uh, but other than that, um, it's, I, I like seeing kind of uh, the real side of everyone. Yes. Me, my, my, with better connections. My cat's tail made some really great, uh, appearances early on as well now she's bored as i've been home for so long but in the beginning this was really fascinating so all you would see is the cat tail that apparently looked like a snake so i surprised several people with that it was good times so we talked a lot about uh kind of your starting at cognizant and how cognizant is doing uh with covid um and, and kind of building out do you have and you kind of take a step back and you think about companies in general in the industries in general are there common themes that you see for companies that are, uh, that at least appear to be navigating the challenge as well? Well, I, I think, um, so you kind of, I think for people, if, if you're kind of in, in the startup world, um, you kind of have to take a step back uh, from, from kind of the way I, I'm going to describe the, at the end of the day, like what I think everyone has realized is they, they need to de-risk, right. And they need to, everyone needs to be more digital everyone needs to be more, more nimble. And so what did that mean? That meant that all of a sudden all these systems that were maybe in a data warehouse or needed people to go into the office to, to move things around or shuffle papers or whatever, um, or all these other processes, they realized how tangled everything was um, uh, and how brittle everything was and realizing that they did, there was a, just a tremendous need for, for digital transformation, for um, accelerated virtualization in a lot of businesses that never considered it before. Um, and so that's everything from, from healthcare to finance, uh, manufacturing, logistics, like all these areas 
um, realize they better get, they better get all their stuff in the cloud. They better uh, uh, be uh, getting their stuff uh, uh, more digital, um, but also making sure everything uh, connects together and 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 they work with their own partners and their own their own supply chains uh, more fluidly. And they also need to be able to respond to changes in their supply chains more easily, which means they need to be more globally accessible. Um, they need to be able to uh, uh, kind of go with the flow, whether it's kind of figuring out how to do uh, virtual agile or virtual product management or, um, or, or where, whether you need to, if as a bank, you're kind of talking to customers, how is a bank, um, how do I talk to them now? I always counted on the branches. And so I need to make sure that I have virtual solutions and uh, everything from the pre-sale side to the post-sale side to figure out how to do customer support in distributed ways. And you know, want your system, whether, whether, whether companies decide to stay fully remote or bring people back or whatever, you, you wanna make sure that you have a system that's gonna be flexible and dynamic. Um, and so that's why, uh, so, so that's kinda, uh, so that's, that's a lot of what I've, I've seen it as the trend, that those are the trends that have kind of evolved. Um, but I, it simply, it's digital transformation, it is virtualization, and it's, and, and it's also just helping, helping companies, helping people figure out how can I function like this and how can I make sure that, that this also works under whatever, whatever the future may hold for us? How can I make sure that, I'm, that as I'm making these investments, these are, these are kind of the, those no regrets investments. How can I make sure that, um, that these decisions I'm make, making, whether they're technical decisions or business decisions, won't just kind of help me weather the storm but it'll help me come out ahead of my competition. And a lot of that, it's really just been about digitalization, like I said, digitalization, getting into the cloud and then evolving it and making sure you had the processes and everything else that's gonna support that going forward once you have modernized and, dig and digitized everything. And then let's just take it down the next level from an individual. If you're talking to, uh, if you're mentoring a, an individual product manager, what would you tell them to focus on to really uh, to get ahead during this time? So I, I, I don't think I would say something different about this time versus versus any other time. Like as a product manager, uh, our, our job is to deliver business value, to be the voice of the customer, to uh, make sure that we're solving the right problems, to make sure that um, we're validating hypotheses and that there's lots of them and that we're constant there's a continuous feedback loop there's continuous innovation there's continuous modernization of everything we're doing so as a product manager if I'm talking about getting ahead or proving or demonstrating the value of, of product management it comes from showing it right so in a lot of ways like basic it's not about it's not about saying this is the feature we need to build or that feature. It's about making, make, bringing the right, being, bringing people together. It's about uh, designing those experiments. It's about executing those experiments. It's about showing that we're on the right path or we need to make a turn. Um, and then making sure you're bringing the right people together who can actually help generate the solutions or the potential solutions um, to solve those problems. And so if I'm kind of drilling in on a specific skill, I think. Being able to continue, if you to continuously experiment, to continuously validate, um, being creative, um, bringing someone who helps bring people together. A lot of, I, a lot of product management. Uh, once you kind of get beyond the roadmap and the goals and the analytics, um, and uh, um, and just uh, ideation, like it's it's the people. And so our job is to figure out how to get the most out of everyone on the project. Um, and kind of take the best, the best qualities of everyone, help mix them together and kind of make sure we're all kind of heading towards and marching towards that, that North Star. Yeah, I think the one thing I try to stress with people is don't let the, the pressure of, of speed, of change, of, of wanting to do something keep you from being the voice of the customer, right? This is a time where sometimes the, the tyranny of the urgent and the fires can pull that away even more. And I think it's, it's such an important time to actually dial that up yeah. um, and make an impact that way. All right, we talked a lot about a lot of different things today. 
Uh, if you were going to have listeners do two things differently tomorrow, based on what we talked about today, what would that be? Doing two things differently tomorrow. Oh man. Um, I would say make sh- make look at your schedule. Make sure you've got a little bit of time set aside for yourself. Um, uh, kind of speaking to the last point, um, it's very easy to get caught up in work and caught up in everything. Um, but you can, as a product person, you can you need that 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 downtime, even if it's a half hour a day, um, to dis- disconnect, walk away, because that's going to be how you're going to see your problems differently. Um, that's how you're going to see, um, that's how you're going to be able to see, uh, the bigger picture when you kind of step away. And I, and I think during this time, it can be a little tricky to kind of see the big picture. Um, so you kind of, you kind of, if you need to schedule it for yourself, um, give, schedule that, that 30 minutes for yourself so that, um, you can decompress, but then come back refreshed, um, new ideas, new approaches, new strategies, new recipes, uh, to try. Um, and I think that that can make that can make a, a world of a difference, especially uh, if you're trying to figure out how to get everything to fit in and it's maybe not fitting. Um, as far as a second thing that I would tell you to go do, um, the uh, this 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 one's a little bit more, would be more uh, of a selfish thing. I maybe um, I, I can tell I can tell you we're building as I'm as we're as, as I've kind of come in we're building out like a. Uh, uh, building out and up uh, this our global product management capability and operations, and we're building out a lot of people on our on our leadership team um, to do a lot more uh, help with clients and helping them uh, kind of get their arms wrapped around their problems and solutions. And so, to that side, I would just say reach out to me if you want to be part of uh, a world class product management organization. Do reach out. You should you should re- not even wait till tomorrow. You should do that today. Um, and, uh, and, uh, reach out to me as the product guy on LinkedIn or any other ways that you find me online. Um, and, uh, I'd love to talk to you, uh, especially, uh, especially if you're interested in, in also leading, uh, uh, global uh, parts of this global product organization. That's a, a great, and listeners that it, it's a, it's not always that you get to work in product management for someone in an organization who really understands what pro- good product management is and what does that mean? And it gives you the opportunity to make an impact. So if, uh, if you're looking, I definitely, I would uh, encourage you to reach out to Jeremy. Uh, I, I, it would be a, it sounds like it would be a lot of fun, a lot of hard work uh, and a big opportunity. So. Yeah, definitely. Yes. on all of those. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Jeremy. It was a genuine pleasure having you on today. Awesome. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. All right. That does it for today's episode. Thanks for listening. And don't forget to join us next week when we tackle another great topic designed to help you elevate your product, your company, and your career.